to BBD. <laughs> what is going on? It's Friday. Ah! It's my favorite day of the week. If y'all don't know, it's my favorite day. <laughs> it is my favorite day of the week. So stupid. It is. I had. I woke up. I woke up early. I've been waking. I've been waking up early, like real early, like four o'clock, four thirty, five o'clock, like bop, like ooh. What's up, y'all? Like this camera angle? I do. Ah! Um, it is Friday. Go ahead and like and comment and subscribe. Child, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I gotta get some gas, so y'all got to wait, and I'm gonna get some gas, and then we gonna go. How much is gas? Three twenty-seven. How much is gas? Gallon of gas in your um neighborhood? D did y'all explain to me why the gas prices be so high from corner to corner? This is three twenty-seven. This is three sixty-nine. And don't you love how they charge you if you if you use your credit or debit card? They love to they like to charge you what ten cents? They would rather deal with cash. What? What kind of gas station is you? So what is going on, y'all? Today is Friday. Um, it's overcast today, which I fucking love the overcast diva. Let me see. Oh, let me go right here. Let me go right here. I know. I'm about to say, I know. I know you didn't pull in to where I, <laughs> I was backing up to, baby. I knew. That's hilarious. I was about to be mad. Y'all was about to see a fight. <laughs> I was like, I know this motherfucker didn't pull into the damn pump where I was going. <laughs> oh, that girl, she's on she's on camera. Does she know she on camera? She's all in my car, bitch. You better get out of my shit. And you're gonna be on TV. I'll be right back, y'all. You gonna be on TV, girl. You love, I love nosy people. DMX says nosy people can get it too. Nosy people can get it too. I'll be right back. I parked too close to the thing. Couldn't even open the damn door, Diva. All right, let's go. Y'all ready? Okay, we we about to go. Today, we talking about basketball wives. Talking about Real Housewives of New York. Um, and some other stuff. I'm gonna put my seatbelt on. We back. Okay, y'all. So listen. He not gonna let me over. I wanna go over there. Th you gonna let me over? Thank you. Thank you, boo. Basketball wives. Oh shit. What happened on basketball wives? I met with Jennifer. Jackie met with Jennifer, trying to get Jennifer to to um make up with everybody. Jennifer has a bad attitude. She's saying that she's hard. She's gotten aggressive because her mother died. Her mother died three years ago. Now, I have no, I haven't had a parent die, so I don't know what how that feels or whatever. But three years, I heard that you never get over a child or a parent dying. You know what I'm saying? They that's the that's the word on the street that you do not ever get over it. So, you know, like Evelyn said, are we gonna allow you to be? You don't turn into an asshole. And especially like an asshole to people who you one seem to want to be around and two call your friends it's like why are you being an asshole to us if any if anything since your mother died and you need support and whatever else you need these are the women these are the women why do you keep coming on this show if you don't want to be around these women. I don't get it. You don't want to be around these women. You have to be aggressive with these women. You're starting rumors. And, and she's holding on to the idea that she didn't say that about Shani, about Evelyn's daughter. Ev Evelyn I, is is over Jennifer. Like, she's really over over Jennifer. Um, I'm sure they'll be friends again. And, and, and I don't think it will happen until she apologizes to Evelyn's daughter. And because Evelyn's like, once you talk about my kids, it's over for you. It's it's a, it's a wrap. It's like, I'm not, we not, there's no coming back from that. You're going to have to apologize. You you realize you call me a bad mother, call my child a latchkey kid. There's all of these things, you know, and that's one thing like when women like, and we, they learn it in elementary school, girls learn it in ele elementary school. The way that we gossip is to mess up your social status, right? How you look to people, right? 
Um, and the first thing people go after is your ability to mother or your ability to keep a partner. That's the first thing they go after as for, for women. And or um, trying to uh, ruin, you know, it's a reputation thing, trying to ruin somebody's reputation. And Jennifer is out of line and she's out of order and she doesn't want to admit it. And then like to say, to dismiss what you said about Shaquille sleeping with Evelyn, in order to justify you saying that, you say, well, he's cheated on you before. Like, girl, that doesn't even, that doesn't even make sense. Because like Shawnee said in the last episode, it's different. It's some people that you don't know, right? But it's gonna, it's gonna hit different if this person is your, your good girl, your good Judy. Like, come on, like, come on for real. And it's just like the, I don't know what Jennifer, she's like, it's like the, the excuses that she makes in an effort to not, uh, to accept accountability, they're dumb reasons. It's like, come up with something better than that now the thing with her mom dying in three years i'm with evelyn it doesn't mean you don't have to turn into an asshole into a gossiping messy asshole trying to ruin other people's lives because you're unhappy first of all you need to be in therapy if you feel like your mother's death has made you to turn you into this hard person and that's not who you are and even jackie was telling her girl you're not even that's not you that's why jennifer started crying because you're not even being yourself that's what i said last week take the fucking mask off just take it off because you're not even being yourself you're not even being yourself that's not you you're not this aggressive person that's not that's not you and that's what jackie's telling her and that's why she's crying because you you're really doing the most jennifer williams the most and still don't want to take accountability still have this stink ass attitude about you know apologize i'm not groveling didn't nobody tell you to grovel apologize just because you apologize to somebody does not make you weak doesn't make somebody look at you different because you apologize bitch if you were wrong you were wrong but if she doesn't feel she was wrong and she feels like she was justified what is she going to apologize for and it's going to be a stank apology anyway it is i mean like i don't know Jennifer, I don't know. I go back. I mean, and a shout out to Jackie, you know, because I can't stand Jackie Christie. You know, I, you know, I really, I really get on her. But the last, the, the last season and this season, you know, she's really, we've seen a growth. That's, I mean, that's what we can say. We've seen growth. And, um, I think that, I think that, wait, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to think of something and talk at the same time. Um, I think that Jackie has shown growth and what Jackie's doing with Jennifer, they took her to a little potty, little pottery thing. They were repotting plants. It looked like, and Jennifer brought somebody with her. And like Jackie said, she, she needs some type of, um, like a shield or somebody to protect her. She don't want to go by herself. She doesn't feel safe around these women, but you haven't made it a safe environment for them either. So everybody is just like on guard. That crystal place was so nice. I was like, look at Jackie with these ideas. That was a nice little little spot that they went to. And Jennifer showing up late. You have to make an entrance. Now you you're not only to me, I would have felt like you should have been there first. Because not only are the women now here, like all together, sitting down, here you come into the room like, hi, girl. What are you doing? Like, I don't know. It's a lot of things that Jennifer does. It's just like, and then this, like next week they show her talking about, now she's talking about her dad is not supportive. And since her mother died, she doesn't have anybody. I get that. Like, I, I get it. Like, I totally, I totally get that. Where you feel like, okay, you don't have anybody, but you don't go into battle with everybody it's not it is unnecessary and it's un, and it's unnecessary for your emotional health as well like why do you always why does it need to be a constant battle maybe that's how she feels comfortable in situations i don't know but i was like jennifer all these excuses you coming up with honey evelyn slammed that door on her she in the middle of crying i was like is somebody gonna hug jennifer sitting on the floor here comes shawnee now shawnee you just got finished saying bitch i'm done with you i don't need you as a friend but shawnee is is you know feel sorry for her and i mean that's i felt sorry for her too sitting on the floor it it was like it was it i kind of i felt bad for jennifer in that exact moment because i was like 
she's crying and she's visibly hurt now this doesn't look like you know she's crying because she's hurting and nobody like nobody like was willing to go comfort her and that says a lot because when you're upset and nobody comforts you that not only does that show that these people really don't fuck with you but you yourself feel rejected and for you for her to feel like i don't have anybody then to start crying and nobody come and comfort her that's a more of a validation for her that she doesn't have anybody and i and you feel sorry for her and then and then Shawnee didn't make it no better now it's like now i gotta hug you because you're crying but somebody else i mean it looked like jackie was on her way over to her i was like okay the thing with cc and Kristen, they go and meet with um um malaysia and what's the other girl's name byron's daughter lauren london what is her name something like that something like i said lauren london god what's her name what's the girl's name <laughs> what's her name i don't know but anyway she was they were all there cc said that she didn't um she didn't have any problems with byron's daughter she said she didn't have any problems with byron's daughter so she was shocked to see her but it looked like byron got some byron's daughter got some issues with you boo and it was funny because on twitter somebody was like so how you got a problem with your dad's fiance and you work with her let me tell you something <laughs> it's possible <laughs> i'll tell you something it is very possible to work with your dad's girlfriend and y'all not like each other <laughs> and you have a problem with her trust and believe me it's possible i've had the experience okay let, let me let me tell you something it may not look like it but I have some fucking stories for y'all. Like I tell, I every time I say I'm gonna write a book, motherfuckers get nervous. I start getting emails and shit. <laughs> Cause I always say, be mindful of the role you play in people's lives. Cause you could have a book written about you. That's gonna be my title. So don't take my title. Title of my book. Be careful of the role you play in people's lives because a book might be written about you. Shit. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. I worked for my dad's girlfriend by his encouragement. This, you know what? Every time I think, I hope I'm not triggered by Jennifer and her unsupportive father and her raggedy ass daddy. I hope I'm not triggered by that. I, with the encouragement of my father, I worked, I went to work with, right underneath his girlfriend. And she didn't, some, she didn't like me. I don't, we, our personalities just didn't match. She's the type of person, if she, listen, listen, listen to what I'm about to say. She's the type of person, if you do, if she does something for you, you are forever indebted to her. Do you understand me? So, <laughs> so just, just, that's that type of person. And when I started working there, it was, it was cool. It was cool. It was for a, a nonprofit organization. It was cool. But then some switch she the, the people in the office didn't like it, it was just like a bunch of bullshit she ended up moving me to another location some location dealing but I, I ended up getting some type of um recognition from the city anyway boo bop boo boo anyway but um yeah i went to work for her i ended up suing the company and won Boop, on a workman's compensation case for emotional distress yes that's <laughs> yes honey so i've had some experiences bitch let me tell you be mindful of the the chapter that's going to be titled the nonprofit organization <laughs> it's about you girl <laughs> the experience so it is possible for byron byron i want to call him byron allen byron scott's daughter to work for cc and cc not really like her you know doing stuff for the dad you know i'm gonna do it for i'm gonna do it for the man that i love and then when when i when his daughter starts to work for me treat her like shit 
honey. Let me tell you something. My father, and it, it's crazy because you know, have you ever had, have you ever heard the story of moms? I know you guys have heard stories of mothers like not paying attention to their children when a nigga comes around and leaving their child out there to like fend for themselves. That was my dad. Both of the women that he had in his lives, in his life, after my mother, after being married to my mother, he did not protect me in situations with those women. And those women caused me emotional distress when I was a teenager and in my 20s. Did not protect me. Man, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Oh, God. These motherfuckers is crazy. And that's the shit about reality television shows. This shit will trigger you. Even, even motherfucking scripted television shows because I was kind of triggered by Jimmy Daly and um and by yesterday their acting was so good I was like they made them niggas made me uncomfortable um but yeah so there, it is possible for a girl or a person to work with their father's uh, spouse or partner or whatever and then not and them not get along so CC acting surprising I don't I don't a lot of people feel sorry for Cece because she has those doe eyes, you know? She has those doe eyes and she's looking like, oh my God, and she immediately starts crying. She's no different than a white woman, in my opinion. Because you do, you, you're passive aggressive with your shit. You say you don't have problems with people. Everybody has problems with you. And all of a sudden, you know, like, I don't, it's, it's two sides to Kristen. Kristen's issue because the way that Byron is talking about Kristen, like I don't care if I never see her again. When Kristen, when Cece was making him food, I don't care if I never see. Like who says that? I didn't. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Like all of a sudden, so y'all was cool, and you're so mad because you look like an unfit grandfather that you live down the street from your grandchildren and you don't go visit him, visit them. And then you hear Byron say, "Well, she could come visit us." I'm so tired. I, like I, I tell people all the time, these new grandparents. When I, my grandparents are grandparents, do you understand me? Grand, G R A N D, grandparents. I don't know about these new age grandparents. I don't know about you, motherfuckers. Y'all motherfuckers is different. It's different. Then I guess everything is different because the children are different. The adult children are different. The things adult children dealt with. A lot of us ain't dealing with that shit anymore. So I guess that comes with a change in how the the elders operate with the a new adult children a new generation of adult children because i don't know these great i don't nah nah my grand my pater, my maternal grandparents raised me period that i'm not gonna say practically they did period so this idea oh she needs to come to us too it's a two-way street. It is a two-way street. Sometimes we come to your house. Sometimes you come to my house. It's a two-way street, but you're not coming at all. That's very hurtful for that for his son. And his son is like, you know, it don't change nothing. You can see in the next episodes, they still arguing. Something ain't right. Cece, I, it's going to come out. Cece is a sneaky. I'm telling you, everybody feels sorry for Cece. I don't feel sorry for her. And it's probably me projecting how I feel about my father's girlfriend and situations and being in situations similar to that. Like, like you know, situations, you know? And it's like, something ain't right. He don't, he don't, he don't want to cut Kristen off so quickly for, for no reason. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just want to help you guys out and wherever your father needs help, but I can't force him to go see his grandchild you absolutely can cannot force him you're absolutely right cc but you can take your happy ass over there too and represent the grandparents your uh, your grand his grandpa couldn't make it for whatever fucking reason but see that goes down to my issue with women having to answer for a man's inactions Byron needs to take his happy ass over there too. But CC can go over there because that's going to create a bond for for with his children. You know, like you're bonding with his grandchildren and his children. That's cool. That's a cool thing to do. Um, but if you don't want to bond with them and you don't like them and you want to isolate him and have them all to yourself. I said that about CC the first, first season she was on. She wants Byron all to herself. I'm so happy to be getting married to Byron. 
We ain't seen you do a Medi spa. We ain't seen you do a belly dance. We ain't seen nothing out of you. But you being happy to get married to Byron fucking Scott. Um, CC. Cecilia. Is that her name? Shit. Where are you going? Let me get over. Okay, and what else, what happened? What else happened? Um, and Evelyn. Oh God, you cars are just getting on my. I'm trying to get over. Um, just pull over, pull over. Thank you, lady. Thank you for letting me over, Trudy. Y'all heard about that lady? We get back to basketball wives. Y'all heard about that white woman, Renee Bach from Virginia, who went to Uganda for in this Christian organization. And went to Uganda and is over there killing kids. Was over there killing kids. Treating kids. Treating kids. And even wanted to adopt a child. Uh, see, this, this, this colonization and these missionaries. Uh, every time these missionaries get caught doing something. Either practicing pedophilia with these children. Or experimenting on these children. I don't know how they get their asses over there and so and it's and it's crazy because people want help and they go over there and start abusing and experimenting on us a white woman kids dying under her treatment you got on a goddamn stethoscope and a lab coat bitch and you ain't not what you are not a doctor not a doctor you need to be washing bed linens and wiping noses bitch and she, I, they showed a picture of her with her with standing over it. This baby had, baby looked like it was probably about two pounds, three pounds. All these wires and everything. And she's at the baby's head doing something. What are you doing? Even tried to adopt a baby that she had just, that at, the baby was two weeks old, the article said. Travesty. Y'all be letting these white Christian missionaries go over to Africa and they be going over there abusing those kids and adopting those kids too. Shit. I read that story like, oh, no, this bitch didn't. That was so disgusting. Anyways, what else happened on um, Basketball Wild? Jackie, Crystal Store, CC, Kristen, OG. OG is just, I don't know what you're doing. You're playing the charade. You're carrying the bone. What is going on? She retired from football. Um, she got a nice body, though. I was like, yes. She walked up into that Crystal shop. I was like, bitch, you better push through OG, bitch. OG got body. Woo! I was like, whoa, girl. Her titties was like, boom, right here. <laughs> Her waist was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, OG, I see you, bitch. You bet fucking athlete, bitch. She got a nice body. But I don't know what she's doing on the show so far. We ain't got her, gotten into her story yet. So Real Housewives of New York, honey, that was the last episode. They had a party uh, for Sonia and Dorinda. Um, and Ramona gave them a party and Luann was doing a, a, um, a new year or Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. What I think it was Christmas Eve. Was it New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve uh, show uh, for her cabaret? And Luann is, is like a clinical narcissist. Like, and then the fact that she has added to her resume this cabaret and she wants to be the center of attention she said she was the last child of seven children so it, it does explain some of her behavior um but she um uh-uh chrysler what you doing the most the most um there were things that she was saying luann and i used to luann used to be my favorite but she has turned into i don't know it's just like somebody it, it's it's like a typical somebody becomes famous she likes doing what she's doing but it has gone completely to her head to the point where she wants her friends to be her fans you know what i mean and it's really weird how she wants them to really be her fans instead of her friends and they're like bitch no we're your friends we come to support you but we're not gonna sit and you know around while you act like we don't exist like what are you what are you doing like that kind of person who does not know how to manage her her um exposure or her now you know like her her exposure she doesn't you know what i'm trying to say y'all she doesn't know how to handle it and it's clear and the and dorinda is not with the bullshit 
Tinsley is definitely not with the bullshit. I do still think that Tinsley is fucking with Scott. Why is he sending you gifts? Why? Why is he sending you shoes because your dog died, girl? Shut up, Tinsley. Tinsley, Tinsley is 43 years old. Never married, no children. Her mother seems like this old confederate Connie and who wants her daughter to get, she has to get married to somebody with a lot of money, honey. With a lot of money. So she doesn't have to do a damn thing. Another fucking Megan McCain. And she and she's so hell bent on making her mother happy that she's driving herself crazy to find any fucking body, but not anybody. Now listen. Not anybody. Do you see how they are pairing people? Like, we don't do that. We in some of our cultures within the diaspora, they do that kind of pair people up children up to be with each other because they understand how it works on some game of thrones shit but do you see how her mother is very strategic on who her who her daughter who she wants her daughter to marry like if they got good genes he's smart he got a good job that's who you marry i don't care if you don't want to get married i don't care if you don't want to have kids get your eggs frozen do whatever you have to do but marry this motherfucking man that's her mom and Tinsley is going to drive herself crazy to fulfill her mother's fucking fantasies and needs and desires. Bethany got sick and almost died. She got an allergy, a fish allergy, and she almost died. Uh, Bethany and Sonny got into it um, just recently, last week, I think, because um, Sonny on The View told the story about how, her, how Bethany yelled at one of her kids on the beach um, because Bethany's daughter was in the room taking a nap so this, this is summertime and the daughter is taking a nap and bethany is yelling outside to the kids to tell them to be quiet and you know what i believe sunny but at the same time i would if I, it's like bethany doesn't seem like that kind of person that will yell at some kids you know what i mean yell at some other women but yelling at kids i don't she, she doesn't strike me as that but I don't know. I mean, anything you could. I don't know. She's going through that. That girl is going. When I say that lady, that lady is going through a lot. Bethany, and again, it's no excuse for bad behavior. But she hasn't been acting bad. Actually, Bethany's been acting pretty good this season. So has Ramona. Ramona acted really good this season. She wasn't really, you know, in in in, in the midst of a bunch of shit. It seemed to center around the season centered around Luann a lot and. Bethany and Luann. Uh, it, it did center around Luann a lot. Luann, she's already violated her probation or whatever, her probation. She's already violated it. But you're this is where the privilege comes in because you you you're still being able to tour. How are you able to leave the state? She was in Miami, right? So I guess they let her out. I guess. I don't know. I'm like, this. how is she able to travel and perform? But I guess fucking rappers do it all the fucking time. But there was something that Luann said that I was like, oh my God, Luann, shut up. She was like, these girls don't understand. When they come, they, she wanted them to come and visit her before she went on stage. And when they get there, out of the way, they're going to Ramona's party. It's a surprise party for Sonia and Dorinda they ended up Barbara ended up spoiling it for Sonia so Sonia knows but Dorinda doesn't know and so she says to them come visit me before my show they go and visit her before the show but she's treating them like they're a fan club like they're part of a fan club and then after being there they said about 10 minutes she kicks them out by telling them she has to get ready but in Luann's interview, she's like, that's just show business, ladies. That's just show business. You just have to understand it. Obviously, you don't understand it. But that's what happens in this town. I was like, are you serious, Luann? <laughs> Bitch, are you for real? If you don't get your ass out of here talking about this is show business and that's what happens in this town. Girl, shut the fuck up. Like, for real. I can't wait till they get on her. I can't wait until they get on Luann at the reunion. I can't wait. Especially Bethany. Because Bethany had every reason and every right to be mad at Luann for not even asking her how she was doing since Dennis died. 
But Bethany said she got so sick from her food allergy, she felt like she was close to death. And she felt like Dennis was pulling her. And she was asking her driver, do you believe in that? I do. I believe in that. And she was like, she kept saying, I'm not going with you. Leave me alone. Let go of me. I'm done. Like, and that was her Bethany's thing the whole time. Like, she never, you asked her about her and Dennis. She doesn't even know how to label him. She calls him her boyfriend, but she doesn't really know. She's like, fiance, my boyfriend. She doesn't know what to call him because they were always, they were like on again, off again, right? And I think they were on again, off again because of his drugs and his drug usage. I believe Beth, Bethany knew that he was addicted to drugs. And she said when she got really sick from her food allergy that she was just like, I'm let, let go. I felt like Dennis was pulling for me to, like I guess to go with him to be dead with him and she was like no let go I'm letting go of this and this and that so she was like and her driver was like yeah you talk about him every day and he hasn't been dead a long time still grieving but it didn't turn and like in that case it didn't turn I know it's not apparent but like it, but like with Jennifer it didn't turn Bethany into an asshole it actually made Bethany more sensitive actually because remember how Bethany used to be about Dorinda when Dorinda would always talk about her dead husband and she'd be like girl let that shit go and all this other stuff now you understand it you've had the experience like Monique on Potomac says you live a, when you live a little more you become a little bit more compassionate because you start having the experiences that you didn't even give a fuck about before and now all of a sudden because you've had the experience now you care you know, um, what else was going on with, with Real Housewives of New York? Um, they had the nice party. It was nice. Dorinda and her, her daughter and her boyfriend were there. And Ramona did. That was a really good gesture because like room, like Jackie on Basketball Wives and Ramona, I, those are two women that I'm like, they, I would always say they need to be on a show, on a, on a, on a, on a show together because they're so like, I, I couldn't understand how Jackie had friends and I couldn't understand how Ramona had friends, but Mar Ramona did really good this season. I'm going to have to give it to her. I'm going to have to give it her, to her. She did really good. Y'all, that's my time. I done pulled up, honey, and I'm late, chow boo. I left late. I didn't. I left late. I acted, I acted like I didn't have to be anywhere. I don't have to be anywhere at any certain time. But I like to be there at a certain time. So I, I'm like have my own time that I like to be there. You understand what I'm saying? What else happened? Jared Carmichael. Go watch Jared Carmichael's interview with Charlemagne. It is a very good interview. They, it's about sexuality, about if their parents' infidelity, just two black men. No, Angela Yee wasn't there and Envy was not there. It was just Jared Carmichael and Charlemagne. Go fucking watch it. It was so good, so insightful. And I, Charlemagne, I'm so proud of him. I feel like I'm, I fucking know him. I'm so proud of him. He did such a good job on that interview. Y'all go watch it. Protect your energy. Take care of each other. Have a wonderful weekend. I might come through and say hi on the weekend. I don't know. But I might. I might. We'll probably go live. Maybe we'll go live um, Saturday morning. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Go watch the Grapevine TV's um, um, discussion about LGBT, black LGBT lgbtq um millennials millennials so go watch that a lot of they talk about everything from religion to systematic um oppression to white supremacy to when they realized they were uh, gay or trans when they realized um how, how when how it feels this was a really good discussion how it feels to be black and queer and to fight for or against systems where you understand if something happened to you, those same people wouldn't fight for you. <sighs> Don't read the comments. They're full of toxicity. Toxicity. But anyways, release all of that. Have a wonderful day. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. And grow something. Peace.